Our second guest today is the lead singer and songwriter of a New York psychedelic rock band who were just in a recording studio with Beatles arranger and producer Richard Hewison. They were formed in 1992. They made their debut performance at the Atlantis on October the 12th where they are regulars as well as the better end as we see here in this videotape footage. You can catch Ruzhenka there monthly. Please welcome to our show, Roseanne Fontana. Hello, thank you. Hi. I was enjoying that little videotape performance beforehand, which we just saw. Um, the band named Ruzhenka. Now, what does that mean? Ruzhenka is actually, um, it's a fairy tale. It's a folk tale. Not a fairy tale. There's no fairies in it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I don't know what kind of viewers I'm getting here. We don't want anyone to flee from their sets. No, <laughs> it's a folk tale um, from Czechoslovakia, and it's um, basically the Sleeping Beauty folk tale that we have in America, only it's mm -hmm. a bit more interesting. And uh, it also happens to be the literal translation of my name, Roseanne, which is Ruzhena, which is like um, uh, sort of slang Ruzhenka. Mm -hmm. So, and, and all of the Ruzhenka characters in these folk tales that have been documented and in picture books and in movies have all been, you know, girl with blonde hair and everything, so it's pretty funny. So it fits, and plus it's, it's a folk tale and we're a psychedelic band, so it's perfect. The band, um, the band isn't really part of the fairy tale. I don't know if the members, you dress them up like um, part of the story, do you? No, no, no. Wouldn't that be fun for a band? <laughs> now, how did you become interested in singing and songwriting? Well, I was always a big fan since I'm a little, little girl. Mm -hmm. Loved the Beatles when I was like six years old, really unusual. And, you know, so when I grew up, I, I wanted to do it, and I just started writing songs. And before I knew it, I had enough songs to play CBGBs, and I did that many years ago, and here I am, still doing it. Oh, yes. Now, um, who's who in the band? The band of Ruzhenka, um, as far as the lineup? Who's who? Okay, well, we have Rich Teeter on drums, who was with the Dictators who were a pretty popular band in the city and in other cities, I guess, in London and in L.A. years ago, late 70s. Um, I have Cleve Christie on guitar, who also does a song, and he's great. He's a songwriter also, so you get like two for the price of one oh, yes. when you come to see our band. And then we have Struby on bass, who is the heartthrob of the band. He's from Jacksonville, Florida. and. And then we have Drew Como on guitar, who's someone I met a long time ago, like 1979, but he had a psychedelic problem back then, so we stopped working together, but now we work together. Uh -huh, and yes. that's the band. It's a, it's a great band. They're really great musicians. And people often have personalities of their own on the band stage, perhaps. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, everybody does, yeah. And I guess that's part of the only part of the fairy tale. Now, what are your songs mostly about? Um, hmm, what are they about? Well, they're not, my lyrics are really good. I mean, that's the thing that I think that is the best thing about what I do. I sing, I do this, but the lyrics, that's the thing. And they're, um, they're a bit surreal. They're not really straightforward, but the message inherent in it is, is very straightforward, you know. And they're usually about hope and darkness, I would say, that even though my songs have changed a lot over the years, it's always been the basic thing in there. You know, the hope and the darkness. And hope and darkness yeah. and perhaps a dream, fairy tales perhaps. Yeah, my lyrics are strange, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm, true. I think I would be really bored if they, were just, if they weren't strange. Well, where do you get your ideas from? Um, hmm, imagery. Imagery. Yeah. Fairy tale pictures? I read a lot. And that's where you mainly get at society problems, perhaps? No, I think that if you read a lot, you can write well, as far as, you know, what you know about the language, so you can express things better. And the idea of a songwriter isn't supposed to be someone who can write what you, what you, the listener, would like to say. It's what you wish you could say, you know? It's what you wish you could, you could put it that way. And so the songwriter is there to do it for you. A lot of times, you know, it's not the case. A lot of lyrics in, in pop songs for always have always been really simple crap, you know. I've heard a lot of it. But, then, but I guess the stuff that's always been the best and that is always remembered is, is really the good stuff, so that's what counts. Then again, those songwriters, the popular people, you know, 
they don't even write their own songs from what I hear. It's always someone else. The songwriter has a separate well, job. It depends. It's always, you know, it's always been the same since the beginning. I mean, you'll always have people who are real and people who are fake, and both of them get somewhere. And thank True. goodness the, the real people get there, too, you know? The real people, I believe, have more listeners and have been noted you know, oh, yeah. for, for it, but definitely. They become more of a historical thing, also. And also get remembered by everyone out there. Mm -hmm. Now, w do you believe that um, most listeners are out there for the music or perhaps for the lyrics? Do you, do you really truly believe that they pay attention? I, it depends. I mean, there's so many different audiences. There's some people who just want to just want to dance. There's some people who just want to listen. You know, so it's it's hard to say. That's true. I think my audience though could be both. You know, it could be people who want to move a little and people who just want to listen also, which is the good thing about what I do. That's one way of remembering a message, definitely, in a pattern theme mm -hmm. of some sort. Yeah, melody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you earn the title, The Hippest Lady in New York? I, I don't know. It was this girl. And she was, I don't know. She wrote this article. I think she wanted to be called The Hippest Chick, and uh, thank goodness they said Hippest Lady, because Hippest Chick is worse, I think. Oh, yes. I don't know. Um, it was an article that was a few years ago about growing up in New York, and going to CBGB's when I was really young and all of this and I guess that makes you hip in New York, I don't know. I guess, <laughs> but the hippest? Uh, I don't know. That's that's a question we can perhaps go into, but... Maybe it's true. Maybe it is. I don't Maybe know. You might you find don't know it, me well. Mm, yeah, perhaps we might find it in ourselves one day that we might be... They, a lot of people, the last guy we had claim to be the handsomest man in the world. <laughs> I think That's strange. at least at least you weren't as big as or whoever wrote you the article. Um, certainly wasn't it, at least thinking of you under those terms as big as the world. That certainly viewers... Uh, no, it was only New York, I yeah, guess. Certainly listeners might, tur might turn away if they hear such a title. Perhaps hippest lady in the world. Mm -hmm. there, there are many hip ladies out there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, you wrote a song named Green. Right. And the songs I understand was to promote environmental awareness. Now, were there any direct references to any of the environmental problems present in our world today? Hmm. Well, uh, what have they done to the earth? What have they done to our fair sister? Jim Morrison said it 25 years ago, and that's when people should have really listened to it. You know, I mean, now 25 years later, it's a bit. I wouldn't say it's really innovative to say what what I say in the song Green. It's kind of hopeless right now, but. Um, the song is sort of like a dreamer, actually. Don't you laugh? There should be green everywhere. That, that's one of, of the lyrics. And You know, I guess it's about dreaming that, that things are green, you know, and it's got this sort of probabilistic correlations in it about Venus and, and emeralds and all of this. And the theme is basically green. Right. Not, not necessarily environmentally, but as I read in one of the articles. Right. It's, it's, it's that totally ties into it, but it's not, you know, restricted to just about the environment. It's, but that's, you know, the earth we live on is supposed to be green. What the grass, is, the sky, yeah, what it is now. sometimes. You know, I don't know what it is now. Pretty even, even pollution, perhaps. <laughs> green pollution. Green pollution yeah. is polluted. Uh, you've got, you've got the Hudson. You've got the Glanus Canal. You know, it's just all green. And um, even Kermit, I guess, knows how it feels to be green. That's right. Okay. Um, do you have any albums out? No. Uh, no albums whatsoever? No albums. Lots of recording from here to Los Angeles to Czechoslovakia to Holland, but nothing on sale. Sorry. <laughs> I was hoping to buy an album. <laughs> um, how is Ruzhenka um, recognized throughout New York City if not by the means of albums? Hmm. I guess word of mouth, and um, I know a lot of people in the city since I've lived here most of my life. I mean, there's times when I lived in L.A. and Europe, but I have a lot of friends and spreading the word and guys in the band spread the word. And, and It's kind of cool being a psychedelic band, too. A lot of people aren't a psychedelic band, you know. There's just, there are people who, who call themselves psychedelic. But we are truly psychedelic in that, you know, the lyrics are out there. You know. I've seen bands, they've pretended, I guess they put their label on psychedelics, but a lot of people do say that you know, it's a thing in the past, the 60s. It's not there anymore. Why don't we stay with it, the 90s? But it, of course... Well, what is the 90s? That's pretty depressing, though. I mean, if, you know, people who think like that are ridiculous because what they're saying is that anything that's good is, is retro. That's really a bleak statement, you know? True. <laughs> so...
I don't think like that. I think that the 90s are everything... Psychedelics an art form, and actually a lot of musicians who are still around now, in a lot of cases, unfortunately, to me that was their best period, was the psychedelic era, because they were coming out of copying, like coming out of blues, and they were getting into this thing that was really different, psychedelia. There was nothing that was like that before. And everybody, all those bands did it in their own way. Now, speaking of psychedelia, I guess, um, what are some of your favorite bands? Psychedelic and non-psychedelic. Well, favorite bands. I have, bands. I have so many favorite bands. I have... Few, few that have influenced you the most, I guess. Well, see, I do a lot of things. I sing, I write songs, I like the music, I like the words. Uh, I'm the front person in the band. I don't play guitar in the band. So, you know, I've been influenced by different people who do maybe just those things. Like, as a singer, I'm influenced by Annie Haslam of Renaissance and uh, early Marianne Faithful and... Um, Jackie from Pentangle and Petula Clark, a lot of these English singers, you know, from days gone by. Uh, as a songwriter, I think I'm influenced by um, a lot of different people, from Smokey Robinson to Bob Dylan to John Lennon. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's, it's a real strange hybrid, I guess. I guess it, makes it is. It really original. Now, what do your fans say all about that? I don't know. I guess it's good. Oh, what do they say about you. what do they say about your music mainly? That it's great, that, that it's good, that I'm talented, and that's really nice to hear. And that maybe you have a shot. A shot. I don't know. I don't think of it like that anymore. I think I would have given up or have become jaded, which a lot of people who've been playing as long as I have on a club level have become. I don't think of it as a shot anymore. I think of it like I'm doing it, mm -hmm. you know? What, what's a shot? I this mean, the, the good thing is it would be great to get a lot of exposure, and then, you know, then sure, my ego could get really big, you know? Oh, definitely. And, um... <laughs> But, you know, money, I don't know. I don't know what I would do with a lot of money anyway. So I feel like I'm just doing what I do, and it's nice. And So I guess taking these words from Mr. Rogers... I mean, I would, I would like to you know, become popular, but if it didn't happen, I wouldn't feel like I wasted time or anything. So taking this from Mr. Rogers, you're happy just the way you are. Yeah. Okay, well, it's great to have you on the show. And you wanted to do um, one more, um, perhaps a number? Yeah, I'm going to do a song that I wrote in Czechoslovakia. And it's called Antonella's Song, and... It's actually about um, a girl living in New York. Even though I wrote it in Czechoslovakia, my mind is on the streets of New York. And it's about a girl who's in a dream world, living in a horrible city, but her mind and her persona is somewhere totally not like New York. Uh huh. Well, it was great to have okay. you on the show anyway, and we'll go great. into the number okay. following this. Okay, so we're going to see a bit of this. Can it 
dark needn't ever intrude to be fine in time so crude Antonella sits on a hilltop in a big city where there are no